Hi, my name's Harry, welcome to Welding Fabrication. Um, today we're going to be looking at MIG aluminium welding. Um, we're using a cross arc machine. Uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail on that. It's quite a basic, uh, probably top end um, of a hobbyist machine really. Um, so, uh, the difference being is we're using a small, uh, initially I'm using a, a, small, small, a small spool of wire. Um, and within that uh, spool, it's normally a standard would be a five kilo. It's about 2.7 because of the weight of obviously the aluminium that's on there. Um, using a dual feed roller which gives us a more consistent wire feed um, and the only difference really being is rather than using uh, a push pull gun or using a spool on gun um, we're basically set this up so that uh, it's much easier or much more user friendly for somebody who just wants to maybe do a little bit of aluminium welding um, and the only difference being is that they just change the torch over rather than having to buy an expensive push pull gun or buy a spool on gun. Um, so. Uh, wire feed roller, so standard inlet guide. Um, what we've got is uh, I've changed the liner out of the torch. So what I've done is I've put a Teflon liner on the inside, uh, opposed to a standard steel liner. What that basically means is that you get a less friction through the liner, more consistent wire feed um, over a shorter length of torch, less likely to snag or kink within the liner itself as it runs between the wire feed unit up to the actual contact tip itself. Um, I've taken out the uh, outlet guide so which runs between the euro connector on the torch through to the back of the wire feed unit here um, and basically that comes out and the length of the uh, liner in the torch is fed right the way through the torch and then out of the back so effectively it feeds right the way through to the front here of the actual roller that's feeding off and into the torch liner itself uh, we're using a u-shaped roller so i've changed the rollers out uh, technically speaking you could use uh, standard rollers. The only difference being is that they're V-shaped rather than U-shaped, so they tend to pinch the wire more and crush it. Whereas a U-shaped roller tends to hold, nip the wire still, but doesn't misshape the wire as it feeds it into the liner itself. So that is a big advantage in terms of using a, a, a U-shape over a V-shaped roller. Um, so I'll just tighten that down. Preload on them. The preload is less because we don't want to crush the wire itself. Um, so it's just a little bit of playing around the machine you might be using. But all I've done is I've just backed the tension off slightly. Make sure it's not slipping on the rollers, but I'm still getting a consistent feed coming through from the wire drive unit through to the torch itself. Okay, um, so the front of the machine, when we're looking at the front of the machine itself, um, quite a basic setup on the machine. So we've got a 2 and 14, which we can adjust depending on whether you want to have it on on off the trigger or you want to hold it on latch. Uh, we can adjust the inductance, and we've got our voltage gauge, and we've got our current and wire feed, which is obviously linked. Um, so it's quite a basic setup in terms of the machine we're going to be using. We're using uh, an argon shielding gas. So the argon shielding gas itself um, is rather than using an argon CO2 mix, we're using pure argon. So it's the only difference in terms of the shielding gas changeover um, that we're going to be making. Um, and when you start looking at things like the consumables, um, contact tip. So although I'm using a standard torch, uh, the contact tip I'm running a one mil wire. But I'm using a 1.2 contact tip. The reason for that is basically, as the wire comes out of the torch, aluminium has an expansion and contraction rate, opposed to say steel, it's about four times that of steel. So it tends to nip, as, it, as the torch gets warm, um, the wire starts to warm up, it tends to start nipping as the wire comes out of the actual contact tip hole itself. Uh, so that's quite an important factor. If you're doing quite a lot of aluminium welding, or you're doing a reasonable amount, you want to maybe go up slightly on size. If you're using a 0.8 wire, for instance, you can actually buy a 0.9 contact tip um, to sp specifically for running aluminium wire. Um, so preparation, basic stuff in terms of preparation for doing uh, aluminium welding. The oxide layer which you get on the face of aluminium, um, the melting point for that is much higher than that of say aluminium which is only 600, uh, 660 or 658 degrees C. Um, so uh, it's important to make sure you have a nice clean face of the material. So we've got a nice new piece of material which take the plastic off of it, you can see it's got a nice shiny finish to it um, and the difference between, you can see this nice shiny finish on the piece of I've taken the plastic off of and a piece which has just been left for a, a reasonable period of time and it's got this dull sort of finish to it, uh, it's got that oxide layer on the surface. So the first thing you might want to consider doing is, um, is wire brushing it first. So the other thing is I've got two wire brushes here, this one I'm not going to be using, this is what I've used for mild steel, this specifically it's labelled up, although it is uh, stainless steel, I've all marked out just to identify them as well for myself. Um, so I don't want to contaminate the surface of the material with any sort of iron oxide. 
So I'm going to use a stainless steel wire brush just to take any oxide layer off the surface. So it's quite simple really. As soon as you wire brush it, you can see the difference between the oxidised face of the material and actually where you've cleaned that oxide layer off. And that's what you want to be taking off to get a good finish um, when you're aluminium welding as well. So you need to take that oxide layer off first. Um, so, set the machine up. We're just going to do a lap joint just to start off with. So we'll show you how to tack it up, the process for tacking, uh, and then for welding itself. Um, so, front of the machine, functions on the machine, like I said, um, wire feed rate, wire feed rate and gas flow, we, we're going to go through that. So, gas flow rate, we run it about 14 litres per minute. Um, when it comes to the voltage, in this instance, 3 mil material, um, looking at about 20 and a half volts, and on about 12 on the wire feed, okay? Um, so, tacking up, in terms of tacking, tacking up, put it up first. You've got to be careful of the fumes for this, the, the fumes that are given off um, when using that, or when welding aluminium, much more, much more fumes that are given off, um, and they are carcinogenic, much the same as used for welding mild steel, but there's a lot more of the fumes which you'll see in comparison. Um, so, tacking wise, we're just going to put two small tacks, make sure you've got a nice clean wire on the end um, before you start tacking. So, again, general maintenance, contact tip, just making sure it's nice and clean. Make sure that you purge the wire with the gas through so you've got a good feed of gas. Um, right, wind your eyes. Right, so it starts up on the bench, so I'm just going to put my return clamp onto the aluminium itself, just to make sure I've got a good return on the circuit, mind your eyes. So two small tacks, one either, and you can see you've got this sort of black, um, this black like soot that's appeared on the materials, so from the actual arc itself, so we just want to make sure we just wire brush that off before we start welding, okay? And just make sure that they're nice and clean, ready for when we go down the piece of material. Okay, right, mind your eyes. So you can see you've got this soot build up on the material from the actual welding itself. So it's worth just giving it a good wire brush just to clean it off. But you can see there the actual finish of the weld. The finish of the weld is reasonably good. One thing I would say is obviously angles are sloping, things like slope and tilt. So when you're actually welding itself, um, your angle of slope and tilt aren't going to vary too much in comparison to welding, say, mild steel. So you're still going to have your angle of tilt. If that was a 90 degree angle, you're still going to come in at 45 degrees and your angle of slope, you're still going to drop it back to about 80. Okay, and push through on the material itself. Okay, thank you very much.